So I spent my childhood in a really, really small town called uh, Raigada district. This is the place where I was born. It was called Visam Katak. So it's southern half of Orissa, Orissa Andhra Pradesh border, very naxal infested. Uh, just to give you some background about this place, uh, the national average of literacy is something like 60 or 70 percent. Uh, Orissa's uh, literacy average is something like 60 percent. The average literacy uh, rate of Raigada district is less than 20 percent. Uh, so I had a very crazy and, and sort of tough childhood, especially because of the extremism that the town was going through at that point of time and probably goes through now as well. I think uh, at a lot of levels, it was a blessing in disguise for me because I was not one of the usual kids because I couldn't make a lot of friends. I couldn't spend a lot of time like a lot of other people did and so on and so forth. Uh, I was thankful to my family for being able to send me to a school. Uh, and, and, I, and this was a Catholic school which they used to pay $3 a month uh, as, as my school fees for uh, God bless that school. But had a great opportunity and, and a great childhood. During this period, uh, was the first time I heard the word entrepreneur. My, my sister, my, our eldest sister used to be among uh, the inspiration for all the younger guys because she'd done well for herself. Our, my sister was an inspiration and she one day showed up at a house and said, uh, you know, I was back at this entrepreneurship event at a college and I felt this sounds like a cool word. Uh, I went on Google. Google used to be really slow. I used to pay for this 150 rupee broad broadband. Even Google used to have this rotating thing like loading. And uh, I figured what that was, didn't get what it was, but I felt this sounds really cool and this is what I want to become. So you remember childhood days when you have all the children and teacher asking you what do you aspire to become? Everyone would say engineer, doctor, and I used to say entrepreneur. Like that's what I used to feel it's spelled like. And everyone used to be like, this guy has gone crazy. But that, that is the level of commitment and clarity I had and it sounds very crazy for an eight year old. That is what I wanted to become and I felt so deeply about it. Post my 10th grade, Everyone in my school used to go to one of the senior high school or universities in the same state. So I felt I wanted to do something different. So I came to the northern half of the country and I used to travel through my childhood across the coastal areas in really cheap, like those general train boxes uh, through my childhood. Then I had this opportunity of going to the northern part of the country because I really wanted to discover hills. Uh, that was a secret, like my family never knew that. They felt our child wants to study. And my dad always wanted me to just come back and work with him at his shop, but uh, really, really wanted to avoid that for a long enough period of time. I'm glad I have. So when I went there, I used to literally take weekend buses, Volvo buses that go to Uttarakhand, Himachal, and a bunch of these places, and every pocket money and every, so I used to do internships with various companies. I would say I'd work for anything that you would give me, just for traveling. And every weekend, I would write emails to these hotel owners, these resort owners, etc., and say, guys, can you please let me stay for free? I want to solve something in this sector someday. Some of them would give it to me for free. Some of them would give me discounts. And a lot of them would say, screw you. Like, we want you to pay the whole price. Uh, I didn't care a lot. So over this period, I got the opportunity to stay across 100 places in this country in more than 200 properties. So. It sounds like a less number, but uh, considering you just have 365 days in a year, and it is just four years back that I'm talking about, it was almost, I was, at one point of time, I didn't show up at my school for four months and I was just traveling. So it was, it was really crazy. I had this instant hunger of sort of saying, I want to solve something in this sector, man. I mean, why, why do I have to go through these experiences where I can't discover these places which are extremely affordable, which I always get to know after going to this town? So it used to always happen, I would land into a town, wherever these bad owners would have asked me to pay the whole amount, uh, that's the Marwari in me, but uh, really I would try and find other hotels and I would find places that were really, really affordable. So I felt I wanted to solve it. Uh, you know, as I say, necessity is the mother of invention. So I started Oravel, which was India's first marketplace of villas, serviced apartments, bed and breakfast, etc., etc. Did that for a period of six months and continued to travel during that period as well. So this whole travel was happening during this period as well. Now what happened was this. The bulb would have glowed, but it did not. For six months, my, my failure trail in life continued. I failed in two companies before OYO came up. The reality was, during the six months, everyone who stayed with us came back with issues that were significantly different. Everyone came back saying, just to give you a jigsaw of experiences, 
We land the city, call the hotel owner, he won't pick the phone, reach the hotel, no signboards, reach inside the reception, reception is sleeping topless, get in the be bedroom, mattresses torn apart, washroom don't have uh, water, they're leaking all the time, breakfast has worms, can't pay by credit card, and so on and so forth. I felt terrible about it. And you know what? If, when I felt that this is this problem, I started talking to a lot of people I knew, and I said, I want to solve this problem. There, there is this real problem out there, which is of having predictable experiences in these hotels. Why don't I solve it? And almost everyone told me, hey, you know what? Uh, this is not scalable. Like this is, uh, anyone who's been in this entrepreneurial uh, community would hear this word and jargon very often. But you know what? I had heard something amazing, which I, which I felt very deeply about. And, and I did a lot of reading, right? Uh, Steve Jobs once said, uh, Innovation is what differentiates leaders versus followers. So I felt like I want to be a leader. I want to be someone who creates and solves for something and doesn't do something for the sake of building a business. So I felt even if I operate just two hotels, I will operate them so well that consumers will at least have a better experience from what they have today. Maybe it won't be foolproof. Maybe it won't be one of the five stars, but it'll be definitely way better than what consumers have today. And they can predict what kind of experiences they're going to get. During the same period, came the turning period of my life. I was, a, I was, you know, this was right after my senior high school. I told my parents that I was going to college. I joined a college in Delhi. I went there for two days and I felt I'll go there the next day. And one day I take, took a leave to continue building Oravel, which was slowly becoming into more predictable experiences. And I kept postponing that one day. And that one day kept pushing to six months. So my family didn't know that I was actually not going to college and I was staying back there building this company and I applied for this random thing called the TL Fellowship. This was end of 2013. Uh, uh, crazy stuff. During this period, uh, uh, what's quite funny is, I, what's the application form was the most funniest part. So I applied, so the deadline is the 31st of December and I applied in the morning of January the 1st because uh, the reality is this is Pacific Standard Time versus Indian Standard Time, and this helped me. So I never knew I would actually make it because there was no Indian as a part of this fellowship. So just to give you a background, Peter Thiel started this thing. Peter is the founder of PayPal, one of the largest investors in Facebook, and a bunch of large tech companies. And uh, his, his view of the world is people who want to create disproportionate value and solve large problems. They don't need the education of college, they need education regardless, and he could provide that education by enabling open mentorship. So I thought that was a great thing. So he basically gives $100,000 to 20 people under the age of 20. Acceptance rates are lower than MIT, Stanford, and a bunch of these Ivy Leagues. The catch is you have to drop out of college. I felt this was amazing, that you get paid not to go to college. Like, who gets that? So I applied. I I was feeling excited about it just because of the whole application process, right? It asked me questions like, what is that one contrarian thing that you think about this world that everyone else thinks you're nuts about? And I felt, you know, if you were trying to do something inspirational and amazing, you're actually gonna go nuts so many more times. So, um, got the opportunity to become a TL fellow, first, first Asian resident, so it was the most amazing period of my life. Built oil rooms, I think I'd love to share a little bit about how oil rooms got built. Through this period, we've disrupted a broader industry in this country, which was sluggish for the last 10 years, and today is among the most exciting industries in the last two, two, two and a half months, right? In the last one and a half years, people used to tell me I have gone nuts a year and a half back. Today we have, for the first time in India, a company has innovated, created in itself into what we have built ourselves. We have 44 clones today, across 15 countries uh, which are getting financed every regular day to be modeled around OYO rooms. And today there is an OYO for real estate, OYO for washing machines, OYO for whatnot at this point of time as we scale. We feel excited about having done something like this, but what it came with is average of three death threats a week. Uh, from real estate guys. They don't like us, right? Uh, because you basically went down and disrupted something as amazing as this. And what I wanted to share about it is, every time something like this happens, don't be scared. When you're there to put a dent in the uni universe, people are gonna get unhappy with you, but that doesn't really matter. So today, we are across the country, we call it Harjaga Oyo, and as we build ourselves, we've built ourselves into the in India's largest branded hotel network, 
and what we aspire to become is the world's largest hotel network ever over the next couple of years from right here in India. Thank you so much.